hello guys welcome to my channel and please remember to subscribe uh, today i'll be giving you a brief introduction to the ipra network for service provider networks in a service provider network we normally have many sites in remote locations so we need to find a way or to ensure that there is communication between these remote sites and the core network the core network is normally located in a different locations very far away from the remote sites so we need to find a mechanism of ensuring there is connectivity between the remote sites and the core network the core nodes that's why we need a transmission network between the base station and the base station controllers and generally in a service provider network we'll have different services for example 2g 3g 4g and 5g and all these networks they have their own base stations for example the one for 2g will be a bts not b is for 3g e not b is for 4g and g not b is for 5g then for the controllers we'll have bscs the base station controller for 2g radio network controller for 3g epc for 4g and the 5g core for 5g network so we need to ensure there is communication between the base stations and their controllers and the transmission network that is being deployed between the base station and the controller we need to ensure also it can carry all these different services on the same underlying network we should not be having a different network for 2g a separate network for 3g and a separate one for 4g or 5g so it should be able to carry all these different services on the same network so the transmission network basically lies between the base station and the controller and its main objective or the goal is to ensure there is connectivity there is communication between the base station and the base station controllers for the service provider network traditionally we had uh, the tdm and sdh which were used as the transmission network but they had their limitations for example they were offering very low capacity for the service provider but you see the network has evolved and the requirements have grown we need more capacity for the service provider network so uh, that's why we have adopted the ip network which offers higher capacity and flexibility in deploying different services for the service provider network so ip run basically is uh, ip based radio access network that uses ip and pls as the one port layer technology this is the integrated router switch solution that are deployed on the RAN and IP is deployed end to end so now instead of using TDM or SDH we are deploying IP end to end from the base station to the controller so we'll have a router connecting to the base station and then we'll have another router or a switch connecting to the controllers in another location then we deploy IP and MPLS on the network so IP basically replaces the TDM and SDH technologies the older technologies and allows the service provider to benefit from high capacity and flexibility of deploying different services on the same transport network and another key benefit of uh, IP run will be the opex reduction for service providers remember we are using the same underlay network to carry different services 2g 3g 4g 5g and even other special like the enterprise services can also be deployed on the ip network we don't need to have different network for different services so for the ip run architecture this is how it looks like uh, we have different nodes at different locations so generally we have aggregation and access the aggregation connects to the 
controllers the access connects to the radio equipment the e not b the bts that site so uh, the node that connects to the radio equipment we call it a csg the cell site gateway and this one is now the device that is installed on the remote location then we need to ensure there is connection between the csg and the sg the sg is an aggregation node generally aggregating multiple csgs the connection between the csgs and the sgs and the rsgs is general fiber higher capacity fiber you can do 10g 20g or even nowadays there is a 100g or even 800g or you can even use dwdm that offers higher capacity so the cell site gateway connects to the radio equipment that not be e not pbts and then we have the sg the aggregation site gateway that aggregates traffic from the csgs and then uh, now the rsg the radio site gateway will be connecting directly to the bsc the rnc and the mme and aggregating traffic also from the sgs so this is how the ipra network will look like uh, for the csgs we normally deploy low end routers for example for huawei network we normally use atx which are low capacity low processing power equipments but for the aggregation nodes we use higher capacity high-end routers and switches for example for huawei we could be using a cx a ptn and nowadays we also have the net engine routers that have higher processing power and higher capacity so this is the general architecture the structure of the ip network so we are deploying ip from the csgs up to the rsgs it's an end-to-end -end. so definitely we need to deploy different protocols for the ip protocol to ensure there is communication between the csg and the rsg then the e node bs will communicate to the bsc through our ip network which is now an end-to-end -end solution so for the protocols we will have to deploy different protocols on the network uh, i'll just mention some of the protocol that needs to be deployed for example we need an igp protocol to ensure connectivity within and even outside that region so we can either go with isis which is intermediate system to intermediate system protocol we can have ospf we can deploy ehrp which is cisco specific protocol or we can have rip the choice of the protocol will definitely depend on how huge your network is and other requirements from your network then we have pgp the border gateway protocol uh, we have mpls multi-protocol label switching we have ldp for label distribution then we also need to deploy QoS, the quality of service. Remember, we are carrying different services, so we need to ensure different services treated based on its unique requirement. So we need QoS deployed on the IPRA network. Then we have the data communication network for management of the nodes. We have RSVP for traffic engineering. The VPNs normally used to separate different services igmp pm for multicast traffic then ipsec for security then uh, we can also deploy segment routing which is now replacing the mpls you can talk of the srv6 so this is just a brief introduction to ipran and in our future lectures we'll be going deeper into how to design these protocols and how to configure them on the ipran network Thank you for watching and again please remember to subscribe thank you